side and we're just going to talk about a few others. Let's start with this one. The black you've already come into contact with and here are other versions of the same. This is called sugar paper. Usually the largest sheet of sugar paper you'll find is this. It's often used for backing artwork as a mount. However, we tend to use it uh, also, and so do children, for drawing purposes. And they really enjoy not only white work on black, but very dramatic colour work on white. Now, think about it. You've got also a situation where you say, well, I want to try my felt tips. It's not really going to work on sugar paper much because, well, in some lighter shades it will, but they tend to be overwhelmed by the, the shades of sugar paper and they come out maybe a different colour than you had anticipated. So if I put a green felt tip on it, you don't get the vibrancy that we'd expect from a white or a paler sheet. The great thing about sugar paper also is that because it has a texture and it's quite sturdy and robust, it's a very good surface for holding on to chalk, whether it be rubbed in or left on on top. We can spray a fixative on to preserve a finished drawing if we wish. It's available, as I said, in a range of colours and typically this type of size. As we move on to just some examples of large cartridge, and we move those to one side. Let's just have a look at a few others. You might be wondering, what's the idea of having such small pieces of paper? Well, this is to one of Frevel's basic tenets underpinning his philosophy of education was that we always start with the child. So that whilst one child might favor working on almost stamp-sized pieces of paper, another child might much prefer to work on something very large. If you're wondering again about getting large paper, this is this, uh, sort of a, a, an easy way out. In the Euro shop, I bought a tablecloth. You can get these in different colors. This is a nice way for children to maybe do group work together. It could be on the floor, if space allowed for that, where they work facing into different areas. And they love to do this. It's a nice shared social activity. And you can buy larger uh, table cloths than this, where everybody can contribute, whether they be very small, rather than putting it on a wall where some of the smaller kids can't reach the higher areas. This allows for, and they have, if they're quite strong and allow for lots of space and group work together. So that's larger sheets are easily available. Cardboard, you can get it from many of the shops will be very happy to give you cardboard and children like, it's a nice sturdy base for children to work on or draw on. Other papers that you don't draw on so much but they're used in the classroom also. One is tissue and many people confuse tissue and a similar type of paper that we use, which is called crepe. The crepe paper has, is roughly, it has been creased in a press and then left to dry. You can see how vibrant the crepe paper colors are and you see that it has a texture. Frequently children will use this more in a collage approach that they'll use it to tear it or cut it and stick it in collage activities. The difference between the crepe paper here and, for example, the um, tissue paper is tissue paper has two sides. So it has a shiny side, which you can see when you look in your pack, and a matte side. Again, you would struggle, or children would struggle also to try and write on this. It's not a robust paper like the it will break and tear if you were to use sharp, small instruments on it. But uh, it can easily take the likes of work 
in chalks or softer materials. So you've come across things like fluorescent card in the classroom and another type of paper which is I've seen frequently just A4 coloured sheets which children like to pick and draw on or card. So we have a large study here which allowed children to really stretch and use great uh, sweeping motor skills as they worked on portraits of each other. This is uh, a reasonably young class. They worked, see if you can pick out some of the materials, the dry materials they may have used. This is a nice way to provide choice for children by maybe just as I did with this, sticking sheets of paper together. They can work this on the floor, on a wall, and it gives them a great sense of working at their own size. But don't forget that you have in your preparation for the classroom activity centre to also provide the little tiny pieces of paper also and sizes and types of paper in between. I'm going to show you some of the work that emerged from free play with dry media in a junior infant class. And just to point out, here's the little girl, she was so cute, who worked on the stamp sized piece of pieces of paper. She chose consistently different colours, but usually the same, roughly the same size, small pieces of paper. See if you can guess or identify some of the materials that she's using in her various little drawings. Same class also, also junior infants. You can see that the children are drawing using a mixture of dry materials, and there, are, there is quite a mix here. Maybe they outline something like you can see the child's hand. A big feature of the children's drawing at this point also is making representations of people who are important and people around them. Things that inspire them, a little butterfly floats through. You can see there's a certain amount of scribbling, attempts at representation of feet or hands, features and eyes, nose and hair on a face. Everybody has a different style, more or less like writing styles. Here's a girl who's circling around with charcoal again and again to create the head of a character. A lot more attention given to the head than the body. A lot of attention given here to the eyes of this character. Again, for me it's fascinating to see that as children work, whatever there is in their mind, it's amazing to see that we're seeing their mind come out onto paper, I think. This drawing is uh, predates writing and the children of the junior infant, senior infant classes are not able to express themselves at this stage in writing, but they can really express themselves in drawing. So perhaps you can see how it might look in a classroom following from a free play into work uh, based upon themes such as family, homes, trees, points of interest for the child. Your second task for your next art lecture is to choose from the library one of the many and beautiful picture books which children enjoy and which help with integrated approaches to the curriculum. I have selected one called Each Peach Pear Plum which has many different uh, stories, fairy tales in it. And you might be reading this during an English class with children and then in the follow-up lesson, which could be art, perhaps you prepare colour or black and white, a mixture of images from the book so that the children, the children can then make their own of that storybook. You can see an example here. The 
very kindly, one of the students gave me some examples of work that she did on Gerard the Giraffe, where the children are using dry media, once again, to tell the story of Gerard the Giraffe. You can see there's quite a lot of different materials and styles evident. Also some other examples of children working from the typical stimulus that inspires children, houses, trees, um, floating items. But a lot of different work, very productive work, where children learn both in English and in sequence, and then they express it, their understanding of the story through an art medium. So in your notebook, we would ask you to select a section of one of your, your, your big book images and make a dry media colour study of it. So we'll see you at the next session with your notebook, the image from a picture book which you've attempted yourself, it can be stuck in, and your work in free play from trying out and experimenting with the materials. See you then.